Good morning, and welcome to another video by the Future Moves Group. My name is uh, Devadas Krishnadas, and I'm the CEO and founder of the Future Moves Group, or FMG. And today, as I promised in my earlier LinkedIn notice, I'm going to be talking uh, towards an SME audience on the economic, financial, and business challenges uh, that are facing them. SMEs are fundamentally different from MNCs. They're much smaller, they operate on much slimmer margins, and in the majority of cases, especially in Asia, they tend to be owner-founded and owner-led. And in a large number of cases, they tend to be family businesses that have continued from one generation to another. While in my first video, I focused on the big picture of COVID, in this particular video, I want to talk about the challenges that SMEs are facing and what they can do about it. In the 1970s, Clint Eastwood made a movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Some of us from an older generation will remember that classic Western. Today, I'm going to deal with the issues that SMEs are facing in the reverse order. I'm going to deal with the ugly, then the bad, and then the good. First, the ugly. This recession is going to be deep and protracted. The Singapore government's projection as of first quarter 2020 is for a minus one to minus 4% contraction year on year. And this is in comparison to a 2019 performance that was below 1%. Our own estimates at FMG that the contraction will be much worse. And I expect that the government, through the MTI and the MAS, will be revising the estimates to one that will be between minus four and at least minus eight, if not minus 10%. And the reasons for this are the serious, disruptive, and destructive impacts of COVID on advanced economies in Western Europe and especially in the United States. And their failure, especially in the United States, to bring COVID under control quickly through coherent and coordinated measures at a national level. That is going to delay the ability for economies to revive, because as the old saying goes, when the United States sneezes, the rest of the world catches cold. And so they are rising unemployment and they are diving economic uh, growth rates don't forebode well for those of us here in Singapore who, for most part, are serving as disintermediaries or re-export or entrepot trade between large economies such as China to the United States or Japan to the United States or the rest of ASEAN to the United States and, of course, to Western Europe. So that's the ugly. Now let me deal with the bad. The bad is that within the SME ecosystem, there's a considerable unevenness. There are actually some portions of the SME ecosystem that are doing very well under COVID. These are those such as companies which are dealing with pharmaceuticals, uh, biomedical, or who are serving us as we work from home through delivery services. But the truth is that the greater proportion of SMEs are hurting and hurting badly. And many have had to close. There have been already more than 12,500 failures, the overwhelming majority being SMEs as of April of this year, with 8,500 being in April alone. And this is out of a stock of 140,000 registered firms in Singapore. Now, SMEs as an aggregate represent 99% of firms registered in Singapore and employ 70% of Singapore residents, which means Singaporeans and Singapore permanent residents. So what happens to the SMEs in Singapore is not a trivial matter, no matter that individually, they may be a very small size. Collectively, 
they have a significant economic footprint. Secondly, many SMEs play niche roles in the supply chains which support the multinational corporations in Singapore. And their disappearance through business failures will have a delaying effect on how these FMCs and the operations here can recover quickly. Consequently, it's important to face some facts. And there are three words that I want to leave with you where we consider the bad. The first is cash flow. The second is loyalty. And the third, talent. All businesses, as all businessmen know, rely on cash flow. Without it, it's like a body without any blood flowing through its system. Unfortunately, especially for those SMEs within supply chain trains, there's extreme vulnerability that one major player within that supply chain train will fail. And when that happens, there's a domino effect across uh, the train from largest to smallest players. The larger players will be able to borrow money against their assets, but SMEs will only be able to borrow money against the personal assets of SME owners. And so, unfortunately, the SMEs will be the hardest hit and have the most difficult time recovering. So make sure your cash flow is as sound as it can be. And if necessary, and where possible, build up reserves so that when there are cash flow gaps, you can fill it, even if it's on a temporary nature. Second is loyalty. Speak to your suppliers, speak to your vendors, speak to your partners, speak to your clients. Seek their understanding about the challenges you're facing. Look to build relationships or strengthen them in order to ensure that you get some breathing space as you go through the recession and try to come up to the recovery. You will find out who are the loyal and who are purely transactional. And you will also discover for yourself whether you have the qualities of loyalty or you're purely transactional when you deal with your business uh, relationships. And people will remember as they have after 2009 and after 1997. So keep in mind that loyalty matters. Loyalty matters also within the company, between employers and staff, and between staff and employers. This brings me to the issue of talent. I take it at face value that all business owners want to do the best they can for their employees. But unfortunately, the truth is that not all employees are equally valuable to a company. And not all employees bring value to the company to the same level. And when you have to cut costs, you're going to have to make some decisions about who to keep and who to let go. These decisions should be made on a meritocratic nature, judging carefully who is of greatest, who makes the greatest contribution to your company over the long haul, and who have been purely uh, passing the time. Now that's a responsibility on the employee staff and staff level as well. If they haven't been proving themselves, then they shouldn't really be expecting you to bail them out. Because ultimately, in an SME environment, all that money, all that effort, all that blood, all that sweat, and all those ideas came from you. And the ability and your willingness to create jobs and contribute to the economy is really underappreciated at the national level and often taken for granted by staff. But staff always expect SME owners to think about them. But whether staff think about SME owners is a separate question. I'm fortunate to have a company where my staff understand this concept that it's a two-way street. 
but not everyone is so fortunate. So be prepared to make some tough choices and tough decisions. Let me now come to the good. The government's three and now potentially fourth budget will provide a lot of support to companies and is already doing so. But that support is not forever and it's not a substitute for our own leadership and our own ideas and our own perseverance. Is there to facilitate, is there to encourage, and is there to provide a practical and a symbolic indication that the government is interested in the survival of SMEs in Singapore. But the obligation of each SME to survive and to recover belongs solely to the SME owner and the people who work for them. So I encourage you, even during this time of recession, to look for opportunities to be more productive, to look for cost savings, to become more efficient, and also to experiment with different ways to deliver your services. And for those SMEs who have highly concentrated portfolios of clients, in some cases, just one client, you're highly vulnerable and the risk of concentration is too great. So look for opportunities to diversify your portfolio of clients, as well as diversify your portfolio of income streams. That's going to take some hard thinking, and perhaps counterintuitively, more investments on your part, not less. So while you look for cost savings, you're also going to have to prepare to spend more. I always tell my clients that the difference between what is a cost and what is an investment depends on what you get out of it. You can't tell the difference on an ex ante basis. You can only tell it from a post hoc basis. So make your investments pay off by careful consideration, taking a calculated risk, but certainly not by trying to reduce your business exposure and to find shelters which prevent you from growing simply because you're trying to survive. Survival is actually going to be found through opportunities for growth. And for those companies that can get through the recession, retain quality talent, retain and build strong, loyal relationships within their business ecosystem, are going to do very well when the recovery comes. And with that, I'd like to wish you all the best and to stay well and to stay healthy. And I look forward to speaking with you again in a future video. And I hope you found the contents of this one useful and of a practical nature. Thank you.